Clerk, please. Ms. Sue Chung. Present. Mr. Charlie Shen. Ms. Rebecca Lee. Here. Ms. Sook Young Park. Present. Mr. Aaron Pack. Present. Mr. William Kim. Here. Mr. Anthony Kim. Ms. Bo Young Yu. Here. Ms. Yoon Min. Present. Dr. Joseph Searle. Here. Coach Law Group. Here. Ms. Jocelyn Hernandez. Here. Thank you. In accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, I hereby state the notice of this regular meeting has been provided to the public by the written notice dated January 14, 2024. The meeting notice has been emailed to all staff members at the district three school locations, communicated to the to at least one of the board's designated newspaper, filed with the borough clerk of Hallyside Park. Um, now we are going um, on the working session, and may I motion to going on to the most working session? I make a motion. Second. Okay. We start with finance. Oh, okay. We start with committee reports. Start, um, the finance chair, committee chair, Mr. Shin is not here today. So I see here we have 13 consent agenda to vote on in our regular session. So is there any discussion on this finance agenda and resolution? Any discussion? If not, we'll move on to the building and ground. There are three consent agenda and one is voice um, work. Would you like to repeat that? There's uh, three, three, three agendas. Um, one's a basketball camp that they're doing June 24th to 28th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's just a short program. And then the Junior Police Academy, I believe it's their third year. It'll be fifth graders, uh, about like 25. They usually do a lottery pick for it. And then there's a movie night that's in the cafeteria of uh, East, um, Lindbergh, I believe, on April 19th. Is there any questions, discussion on these three agenda on the building and ground? Nothing that um, I, I like to, I'm sorry that I need to go back to the finance that I missed the one question regarding number 13 on the finance. South Suburban Joint Commission Agreements. Based upon our conversation with Dr. Cirillo earlier that can we can you can we verify what who might be in charge of the person who checked the actual calendar date being shared with our transportation company? Sure. And um, the vendors and the drivers so we don't waste the money that they're charging. So for the edification of the rest of the board, when I spoke to Ms. Chunk today, the issue is that in the event uh, we, Palisades Park Schools, do not communicate with the transportation provider and they show up to the home of a special needs student, they would bill our district. So to ensure that we are obviously being cost conscious, uh, we want to have multi-layered approach in the event a person is absent. Uh, usually it's the secretary at the board office that is communicating the district calendar. I'm gonna ask that our director of special services be a second uh, line of contact to ensure that uh, when a out of district student has no school that the transportation provider doesn't show up to the home to do a pickup. So I will have a two layered approach in that. So Mr. Alex and Ms. Joanna Halle will be in charge of the 
communicate with that company? Well, currently it's Ms. Right. Diane Montemuro, uh, right. and the second okay. would be Ms. Hallie. So I would love Alex to do that as well. Um, he doesn't do much, but I think he can handle one more thing. <laughs> so Ms. Ms. Diane, right? Ms. Diane and Ms. Hallie, the Director of Special okay. Services. Okay, so soon after the conversation with the... Yeah, I was Alex. thinking about giving it to Alex. He's very forgetful, so he'll probably tell the bus to show up. Okay. Pick me up. So, Ms. Diane Montemoro. And Ms. Joanna Howie. Thank you. So, next, curriculum committee. Curriculum, curriculum committee chair, Ms. Paul. Personnel, personnel. Oh, I'm sorry. That okay. I personnel. Okay. Personnel. Okay. Personal Chair, Mr. Shin is not here today, so I'll just briefly introduce about the agenda. We have presented agenda one to eight. And is there any discussion or question regarding on the personal matters? No discussion? Um, about the literacy night, yes. can you explain? Of course. Uh, so that's a program that we've had in years past. We want to have more community engagement. We want to invite our parents. Um, and we've had much success in years past. So we put a posting out to see the interest of our faculty and staff. Everyone that has applied, uh, we are obviously going to utilize their needs. Um, so it's going to be a program where we invite parents of children. We are reading books, um, hopefully having small snacks, and just really connecting with the home uh, school environment. Do we have a, a the year tonight at Lynn Burke only or high school? Is it so we had one earlier in the year at the Early Childhood Center. It was a parent engagement program, uh, very successful. Uh, we also uh, were very successful earlier in the year throughout the course of the day, uh, especially with the youngest children in this building. As the parents were dropping off the kids, we had a great uh, showing in the bilingual um, classrooms with Miss uh, Miss Rodas, Miss Nova, and Miss Padron's class. So you know they're very successful. But at Limburg, we're going to do an evening. We want to invite the parents with the children back to the school. Thank you. You're welcome. Further discussions in personnel. If not, let's move on to the curriculum committee. Ms. Paul, please. Uh, deal chips. Be resolved that the Cal State Park Board of Education, on recommendation of the superintendent, includes the following deal chips Liberty Science Center, Tech Air, Prudential Center, Korean Tessai in New York, is Korean Restaurant, Bergen County Technical School, Grounds for Sculpture. Pictorio, Espanol, and Noche Pequeno, Columbia. Question about the Burger King. Is that like an open house thing or is that a work session? No, so uh, usually some of our special education students, uh, part of our work based learning program, we want them to learn different trades. Um, so we've been partnering with Bergen County Technical Schools, schools excuse me, uh, and we transport some of those adult age children to learn different uh, programs of study. We're not promoting it. They're doing a good job of it themselves. For the questions, <coughs> if there is no discussion, let's move to negotiation committee. Mr. William King. Um, proposals have been exchanged. We've had our second meeting. Just say negotiations are ongoing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. For, thank you very much for spending a lot of time on our negotiation. Of course, it's um, proposed our exchange meeting. Also, PPEA members as well. For your, I appreciate your time and uh, presented the meeting. So next, oh, is there any? Oh, well, that's a confidential matter. So we are not going to ask about this matter. Um, all right, so 
policy committee is mean we have any report. New Georgia School Board Liaison Alternate. Ms. Sujong Ba, do you have a report to share? I have no report today. No report today, okay. School safety and security oh county school board rep and alternate. School Safety and Security Committee, the committee chair and representative is not present. There were no current updates on that committee. Okay, so move on to all the business. The, there are two agendas so under the all the business. That one is the one that we tabled or had updates from the last meeting that we tried to get. Oh, oh, that's the link. That's not the link. It's the other person. So ask a school that was a resolution. Resolution came out last month, but we tabled it as we need to negotiate to raise the rental fee. So we got the modification from the school and it was shared under the folder. <coughs> so we are going to vote on it. And, and the second one is where we are going to vote and we were, uh, yeah, we had to vote on the architectural services as well. Also that was tabled from last meeting. In, on February. And there's another one that I would like to make a motion on the old business regarding the settlement agreements that was to be resolved on March 6th special meeting, but we tabled due to some issues that the board members has no enough time to review. So today we'll vote on that. And I'm going to bring another motion on their old business that, that as I stated last February meeting that I'd like to make a motion to open our board members public email on our website. That's you will think about before we vote on regular meeting and if there's any discussion or question, please. So if I could just advise everyone, hi everyone on the board with me, I'm Jonathan Bush, I'm, I'm the new guy, I'm the uh, new board attorney. Um, I'm just going to suggest based on uh, Madam President's uh, old business agenda items that we add a number three, so we'll do a number one next to the ask school rental fee, two for the vote on architectural services for 2024, and three would be what I would call the previously submitted settlement agreement. Okay, and then so you would, someone could make a motion on any individual forms of these, or someone can make a motion for items one through three. So previously submitted the set, settlement agreement. Okay. Settlement on four. What we a, discussed at the special meeting, I think we should be very cautious of the discussion, and if we need to go into closed session for that, uh, we can do that later. Right. It's, and and I, I say previously submitted just because I understand that you've all received a copy of it. So that's that that describes this previously submitted. And then obviously it's a sensitive topic. So we have to be careful what we discuss out here. But if you have a question as to whether you can discuss that here, feel free to ask and then we'll make a decision as to whether the board wants to go into uh, closed session, session, executive session, yeah. yeah. 
but otherwise someone could make a motion if you'd like for items one through three or items one, two, three, whatever combination of that. You or anyone we want to add? Uh, our motion. Well, we uh, can't do it now. Not, We're no, not doing no. it. It's because you're doing the work session. Yeah. Work session. Yeah. I'm still learning the ropes here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Okay. okay. So the new vision is um, so it's about the budget hearing that we were scheduled the budget hearing May 17th of not, not May, sorry, not May 18th, May 15th because of that in order to give more gaps between those the, the budget hearing dates to our regular meeting, we like to move our regular meeting May 22nd as a special meeting. So we'll vote on that on the new business. Ms. Chung, that would be two meetings in May. We must have a budget hearing on May right. 7th right. and our regular meeting instead of the 15th will get pushed back right. one week. Oh, it's a second. Then I did present a little bit. I'm sorry, I'll, I will do a gap, revise what I just stated. I'm sorry about my misunderstanding of the dates. The special meeting on Tuesday, May 7th, 2024, to hold the 2024 to 2025 budget hearing and the regular meeting originally scheduled for May 15th will be moved to May 22nd as a special meeting. Do we have the time for this budget? I think we should stay consistent with the 6.30 so there's less confusion. Does 6.30 uh, work for all board members on those nights? Yes. The 7th will only be the budget hearing. Thank you. And the May regular meeting will be moved to the 22nd, right? At yeah. the same time. Right. Any more questions, discussions Mr. on this budget hearing? May 7 and May 15. So what is the mention of 15 we are going to Yeah, 15 meeting. was originally set for our regular meeting, but we are moving a week later. Oh, that's, thank you. Mm -hmm. Going to uh, just quickly go back to old business for a moment. For the audit and legal professional services approving contracts, I just want to note in the Bush Law Group retainer agreement, there's a provision number six that gives a lot of uh, leeway to the firm. Uh, I'd like to put a condition in there that at a minimum the board president and superintendent are kept informed and that billing is done regularly, uh, at least on a monthly basis. Thank you for putting that issue to my attention. I actually thought it was included and I didn't realize that was not so, but that that document was shared with all board members. So, so you're aware of it, you read mm -hmm. under our shared order. So we're both on that approval on the our popular service agreement. That's number five. No, number five on the oh, old business, yeah, yeah. right? And um, approval, approval to professional service agreement. There's any other questions on this budget hearing dates and our schedule move to the May 2nd? May, May 22nd? If, not, if there's no further discussion, may I have a motion to adjourn the work session and enter into the regular session? I'd like to make a motion to close this work session. Favor? Uh, Since I don't have a report the board of presence, I 
like they have uh, that procedure to recognize our fabulous team. Fabulous team, thank yes. you. Uh, <laughs> so it is an absolute uh, honor and privilege. I've said this before and I say it again. We're very fortunate to have um, recognition, not just on a local level, state level, but now nationally. Um, Rachel Morgesi and the dance team have gone above and beyond. They have brought a ton of prestige to our school, to our community. Um, thank you for all of you young student athletes. Uh, dancing is a sport as far as I am concerned. Uh, and you guys performed fortunately three years ago for my wife and my kids down in Orlando. I'm sorry I haven't been there again, uh, but you guys are awesome. You guys really make our school uh, very, very proud. The video, if you haven't seen it, Take a couple of minutes because it's remarkable um, what they're able to achieve. So to Rachel and your group, instead of staying any much longer than you need to, why don't we come up, why don't you get a round of applause and a picture. How big is the trophy this year? You have to pay for a seat on the flight home with it? Where is it? I don't see it. They're hiding it. Oh, it's that happy, huh? Yeah, there it is. So the dance team, uh, for those of you that do not know, finished second nationally in Orlando, Florida, uh, three weeks ago, approximately. And then they brought home that warm weather with us, but now it got cold again. So we might send you back for another week or so. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Congrats, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. President's Day weekend next year. That means book your flight now. <laughs> Second, before I sit, um, we also have another tremendous uh, athletic partner uh, in Leonia. They were invited, but unfortunately could not be here. But our coach and one student athlete is available with us tonight. To Tara Lapira and Valerie Ramirez. They are representing our girls' swimming team who just won their 10th consecutive league championship. Wow. Please come forward. Congrats. Always here. Oh, one more picture. Oh, <laughs> Valerie is always here. Yes. Wait, when I take the pen, I was Congratulations. She's like, I'm always here. Can I take this one? Sorry. Yeah. Congrats, guys. Great job. I hate, I hate to remind them, um, if I'm not mistaken, the last match or event in a swimming match, or meet, whatever they call it these days. We were actually ahead in points, and we wind up losing by one in the state championship. So, we are getting closer and closer. Um, our, our journey to the top is yet to uh, happen, but we are slowly getting to the peak of the mountain. While we are on some congratulations and great news items from me, we are very fortunate and I am pleased to um, announce that Mr. Patrick Fallon's submission uh, in conjunction with two vendors uh, to the Department of Education um, for a high impact tutoring grant was successfully recognized. We are recipients of $106,000 for after school programming for our third and fourth grade students at Lindbergh Elementary School. Uh, we submitted an application uh, in conjunction with Discovery Education and Proximity Learning. The state favorably uh, responded by giving us a very um, <coughs> decent amount of money to spend on our students in tutoring after school programs, virtually from home. So congratulations go to Patrick um, and everyone that helped in that submission. To Ms. Bo Yu, uh, I know she doesn't want this recognition, but I need to memorialize it. About two weeks ago, one of our board members made a $1,000 donation to the class of 2025 to offset much of their cost uh, as their senior year is soon upon them. Miss Yu, I commend you, I congratulate you and thank you. Uh, 
I do need to go into closed session, board members, for two HIB reports. But before I forget, like I always do, our student representative, Ms. Hernandez, the floor is yours. Do you have any reports for any good things happening in our schools? Um, well, tomorrow there is an activity that the Dramatic Arts Society will be hosting um, from 6 to 8 p.m. at the high school. Excellent. Dramatic Arts, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., Palisades Park Junior Senior High School. Thank you, Ms. Hernandez. Thank you all for being here. You guys. Thanks for coming. That is uh, the conclusion of my report. Thank you. Okay. Um, so next to the reports of the board of Tony, and I'm happy to introduce Mr. Jonathan Bush, our new legal representative of Palisade Bus School Board, of Palisade Bus Board of Education. And I'm very happy to work with you, Mr. Bush. And do you have any comments and words? No, just thank you for having me. I appreciate the uh, the faith that this board has placed in our firm. Our firm represents school districts in 19 counties throughout New Jersey. There's 21 to those of you who count. Um, and uh, we, we're, we're just lucky to be part of this district. Obviously, with Dr. Cirillo and these board members, there's a lot going on here that uh, to be proud of. And one of the best things about being a school attorney is you can help in a small part to move education forward for kids. So anything I can do to, to be supportive of that and make your jobs easier, more efficient, that's, uh, that's what I'm here to do. Thank you. So next, we approve the board minutes. We have two board minutes that, because we had a special meeting that was held on March 6th. Do you, um, can we do consent, make a consent agenda to vote on both? Yep, you can just say someone would make a motion for the, for the board minutes. Of oh, okay, that would be the same thing that they have done by one. You don't have to do them one by one. You can do them all together unless there's. But then you need a motion again. So motion to consent. So when you say to, um, just so when you say yeah. consent agenda, right. the board typically yeah. votes on the entire agenda at once or right. each section of the agenda at right. a time. Okay. No, I mean, I'm asking you. Typically, does the board vote on each section nope, at no, a time? We don't. So usually on the committee reports, we do the whole collective group. Okay. With something like this, because a board member may have been absent at one or the other mm -hmm. meeting, it's yeah. going to be hard to do them as consent. Yeah. Yeah. So that's fine. Okay. You can do this one by um, one, if you like. Okay. So we have a motion to approve the board uh, meeting minutes on February 21st. That's our regular meeting on February. We have a motion to approve. I'd like to make a motion for February. Okay. Second. 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 Okay. Second. 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 Work, um, work work, please. Yeah, we're, we're good. All because I you, you could choose to do uh, a, a all in favor mm -hmm. any opposed, which you did, or you could do a roll call. But in this case, you could just go all in favor of any opposed, and, and we're fine. Okay. Okay. So okay. Okay. We just ask now for okay. a motion for the March 6th minutes. So the consent to roll call here on the meeting. Yeah, that's a that you don't you don't have to for minutes. Okay. So you could just ask, you could just, you could just request. Uh, okay, let's move to the uphold the meeting minutes that was heard on March 6th special meeting. May I have a motion to approve the minute I, minutes of March 6th? I make a motion to approve the March meet, uh, meeting minutes. Second? Any second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Aye. Any abstention? And just for the record, um, Mr. Business Administrator, if you could just note who those are to make sure that they, uh, their abstentions are noted. Noted. Okay.
Alright, so we're going to the committee reports and we have 13 items on consent agenda to approve for approval under finance agenda and resolutions. Since Mr. Shin is not here, then is there any further discussion? We, we did ask him in work session, but we cannot see if we have other discussion. Uh, yes. I may ask, can you explain how well our preschool program is proceeding, progress, any? Is it in any of this, Rebecca? I'm not no, sure. I just want. Can you bring it up maybe in old business? Sure. Just so we can vote on this while sure. we're here. I'll be more than happy to talk about that. Finance um, this is from finance, yeah. I think number 11. Is it related preschool. to preschool? In a way. Sure. Yeah. So then that's a good time then. Uh, we are. We submitted our budget, uh, the, the county office. That was inclusive of, I think, approximately $2.8 million in preschool expansion aid, which we received. Uh, we are anticipating running 180 students. We cannot house 180 students here. I had another meeting today with Ms. Romero at a provider location. Um, we are hopeful to enter into a signed agreement with them in the near future where 30 Palisades Park students currently attend. They're currently in that program. They're ages three and four years old. They are eligible for the program and their parents do not have to pay the tuition so long that the facility abides by all state code regulations. So as long as uh, they abide by the code and regulations, uh, so those 30 kids will be basically godfathered in, in So they're technically our students, Rebecca, they would have to establish residency in the Palisades Park schools. Okay. Once they establish that, 15 students is the max per classroom in the preschool program. They will have two sections next year is the goal. That's what the plan is. Everything seems to be rolling forward. They have certified teachers. The biggest win uh, for those parents, they're gonna be saving a nice And payment. how much more room do they have that they can uh, so that's a great question. I wish they had more room and we could, you know, we're not renting technically, we're just sending the funds with the mm -hmm. student. Uh, they, they potentially are looking at two additional classrooms in the following year, but we check every day, twice a day on our state grants and management system. We are hopeful that we're still in round two of the preschool expansion grant, which would potentially allow us to build as we intend. So we are, fingers are crossed, most days we move it forward, some days we just stay still. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? The next is... Uh, we need a roll call. Oh, we sorry. need a motion to second. We need a motion to second. Yes, so may I have a motion to approve item number 1 to 13? I make a motion to consent agenda for the 13 items. Second. Roll quick, please. Ru Chung. Yes. Rebecca Lee. Yes. Yun Min. Yes. Aaron Pat. Yes. Sook Young Park. Yes. William Kim. Yes. Bo Young Yu. Yes. Okay, next to building and ground. There's three items before you. I would like to move to consent agenda on all three items. Second. Any other discussion on this matter? If not, roll quick, please. Chu Chung. Yes. Rebecca Lee. Yes. Yun Min. Yes. Aaron Pat. Yes. Suk Young Park. Yes. William Kim. Yes. Bo Young Yu. Aye. Thank you. And then the personnel, since Mr. Shin is not here, that um, there's there are eight I consent items to um, to approve. May I have a motion to approve eight consent agenda? Second. 
door quickly. Su Chang. Yes. Rebecca Lee. Yes. Yun Min. Yes. Aaron Tan. Yes. Suk Young Park. Yes. William Kim. Yes. Bo Young Yu. Aye. Thank you. Next, we will go on to curriculum committee. Ms. Fu. Park. Yes. William Kim. Yes. Bo Young Yu. Aye. Thank you. Next negotiating committee. Mr. William Kim. No items on the agenda. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next policy committee. Mr. Umi. I have to know this one. That's it. Thank you. New Jersey School Board Liaison Alternate. I have no report today. County School Board Rep represent uh, Rep and Alternate. Mr. Arunga? That concludes the. Okay. So we we'll skip the school safety and security committee and let's move on to the old business. If I can, uh, the, number. the numbers are so eight is resignations right. under personnel, right? So then curriculum is one field trips, and then there's nothing under it, O through S, but then T is old business, and there's we created one, two, and three, correct? Just want to make sure everybody's clear on that. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any questions about that? Mm -hmm. Okay, one is the ask school rental fee, we create a one for that, mm -hmm. two, the vote on the architectural services. And then three, the previously submitted settlement agreement. But I guess I, I guess I'm asking about the other agreement because I see that, and, and I'm, I'm self-interested in this one only because you have the auditor and the board attorney on here as well. Um, is that something you're approving tonight? Those agreements, or is that just for documentation purposes? Oh, uh, I think we approve. You want to approve that? Yes. Tomorrow. Approve the retainer agreement to yeah. the condition that six is amended. Okay, and, and obviously I've. I'm not looking at the retainer agreement, but we can talk about what that language looks like. It's fine with us. We're not, you know. It's, yeah. yeah. It's just to protect the, the school district from. Um, you mean that we want it to be amended? Number the six in the retainer agreement six. for much longer. Yeah. Yeah. We've had some. Uh, yeah, and, and your concern was about just making sure that, the, I just want to make sure, your concern is making sure that, the, that that we check in with you on cost. With the board president, super, is good with me. I, I don't need mm -hmm. to be informed, but somebody should be. Right, and just so you all know, I mean, we would never operate without direction specifically, Absolutely. and we can't as lawyers without direction specifically from the from the board's authority on this, which is the superintendent of schools, your board president, your business administrator in some capacity, or as otherwise designated by, by those in leadership. Um, but also, just so you all know, you'll be obviously billed on a monthly basis, um, hopefully in as limited a way as possible, depending on what you have going on. But th that's a number four in a monthly itemized fashion. You get your bills usually, just so everybody knows, in the, but by the 10th or at the latest by the 15th of the following month for the prior 1st through 31st or 1st through 29th in the case of February, right. they'll always be you know the, the prior month. So you'll be, yeah. you'll be told, and then obviously we often have discussions about whether or not that that bill reflects what you expected and if there's a way to fix that in the future. We may be lawyers, but we're also trying to be customer service friendly because at the end of the day we work for you. So I'll make sure that, that that works, okay? So we'll add language in number six to, to, to the board's present satisfaction. Is that, is that okay? That'd be great. Okay. Just, just so the board's aware, if you haven't read the agreement, 
Number six gives a law firm a lot of discretion to act without uh, approval from the board or the super. Um, and so, Mr. Bush, thankfully, clarified his policies and processes. Yeah, and, and, and the reason that language is in there is because it's not as if, you know, when you're representing organizational entities, our, our rules of professional conduct are complicated as lawyers because if I had, you know, if, if I were a, uh, a divorce lawyer and I had a single client, I could just call the client up and say, hey, what do you want to do? When there's a nine member entity, it gets tricky, especially when you're not always on the same page, although I know you try to be on the same page as often as possible, and so it's difficult. And in the period between meetings where you only meet once or sometimes, rare, I guess twice a month, depending on the month, yeah. um, you know, I, we have to make decisions in between in your best interest, but it's always based on the direction of someone. We would never just decide based on throwing something to the wind, for sure. You're the client, so you decide. For full transparency, since there are three items in old business, is it fair to say professional services, audit, and legal 2024 should be number four? Uh, well, two is architectural services. And number three is the professional services, audit, and legal. So, so well, I think we just decided that number one was the S school. Yep. yep. Number two was the architectural. Services. Number three was the settlement agreement. Uh, and then four would be the professional services. Four would be the professional okay. service audit okay. and legal, I guess. Okay, if you want to just repeat the P, then that's fine with me. So number three would be the settlement agreement. Right, okay. which is the one from the March 6th special meeting that All was taken. Right. Sorry, I'm just, <laughs> you know, okay. sometimes it'll be two different paperwork. As long as everybody knows what you're voting on, then you can vote. Right. <laughs> right. Otherwise, we have, we have some more work to do. Um, okay. We have a motion to approve ask the school renter fee. Did we agree that the fee is going to remain at $25,000? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I'm going to take that. I'm sorry? Where, no, I would, I would say I was going to take that back. Well, if, if this, you could do a consent agenda if, unless there's an issue and you need to separate it for some particular reason. Well, okay, then. That's up to you. Okay. Who's the architect? Yeah. That we are, I think we have to, well, this one is actually nomination. You know, it's not. They haven't retained an architect yet. They went out right. to RFP. So, we have to vote for so there's got to be a nomination for a firm and then a vote. Yeah. So, well, it's a, it's, so you, okay, so you don't have the name of someone at this moment. Six so people applied. We right. do have someone who is a holdover. I don't know if the board's choosing to I name. understand. So what you could do is, you could do items one, three, and four as as a consent agenda, and then go back to two. Okay. And let's do two separately for that purpose, but that's okay. Okay. So you can ask, if you'd like, Madam okay. President, you can ask for a motion on items one, three, and four uh, under old business, okay. a motion and a second, and then you can do a vote on those. Right. And then we can go back to number two. Okay, and I also separately. have a motion that um, the all board members cover email be all reflected on the website. That can be added to number five, or it has to be separate. Um, you could, it's from floor now. If you want to do it as a, if you want to do it as a motion, you'd have to ask someone. Right. You can you could add that as something I, as the president or the chair of the meeting. Mm -hmm. You could do that. Okay. So Council Bush, I had a um, question about that with the email being publicized. Mm -hmm. um, there has been issues even. On uh, my personal, you know, um, where a parent reaches out, tells us the whole story, mm -hmm. we pass it on to Dr. Sherlock, but some people, they get involved in, you know? Right. So I was, I was proposing previously, like every time she brings it up, I propose if we could have a, a main email representing the Board of Ed members and that everyone has a password to it and they can go look at it instead of being a directly addressed to someone. If that was the case, that I think all board members have their own choice. You don't need to even respond, but you can bring it to board president. 
and um, I just don't think yeah, I'm just bringing it up because you're asking everyone at this moment to right, publicize it. Right. And uh, I believe that each board member have different knowledge of four aspect acts regarding communication between the public and the board members. So it, with that knowledge, I don't really concern about what you're concerned about, the communicating with the parents with the board members. I, I think it may be helpful to get maybe Mr. Bush's take on this. Uh, this yeah. has been brought up many times at our meetings. So um, does Chung invite board member emails to be displayed on the website? Uh, previous attorney advised that there's liability for board members to be involved directly with parents. And so it's been going back and forth. Uh, if you have an opinion, please do share. Um, so yeah, and, and, and most legal advice that I give, I would give in executive session for the purpose of protecting the board because the advice suddenly is no longer privileged if I give in public. But in this case, I think we could talk about something that I would probably even give a um, that I, I don't, I'm not concerned about that privilege uh, unless you disagree. I, if you're looking for the advice here, I'll give it to you. And that is that as, as elected school board members, you all know that you are charged with following both the School Ethics Act and the Code of Ethics for school board members, for, 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 okay? And, and, and that applies in everything you do uh, as school officials. Right? We know how that term has been defined, and that's been, you know, that's a, school, a lot of school attorneys are making a lot of money off uh, these crazy uh, interpretations. But in a, in a much more standard way, it's important for all of you to understand that when you get an email from a parent, from a member of the public, from a vendor, from anyone, you're supposed to comport yourself in a way that complies with both the act and the, the code. And so I don't believe that there is per se liability in having your email addresses published on the website. In fact, most school districts, and this doesn't mean it's right, so my firm represents about almost 90 districts throughout the state of New Jersey. I don't know of uh, any district that I'm aware of that doesn't publish the email addresses of their board members on their website. There are many times when board members of course, none, none of the districts I represent, um, I'm saying that somewhat facetiously, but um, the board members typically know what to do. Sometimes a board member may respond in a more, uh, in a way that could potentially subject the board or at least themselves to liability. So as long as in your responses, for example, the example of a parent that uh, Rebecca gave, if a parent emails you something related to their child, let's say, that's something that you would refer to the superintendent of schools. If a person from the community sent you their resume, for example, right? As long as you referred that to the superintendent of schools, if there's a policy concern, you refer that to the board president so that you could have a possible referral of that matter to the, to the policy committee. That's something that you have to do. But as long as you don't take any private action or individual action that compromises the board, there is no liability, in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. So I'd like to make a motion to publish the board members' public email to, uh, to be reflected in, to display in our school website. That's number five. Yeah, that's number five to be added to all the business. May I have any second? Yes, well, so, so, um, do, so I think what we're gonna do is, what? we're gonna do items one, and, and then plus three, three through five right. as a consent agenda. Is that right? Or are you separating five? I think as we well? should separate five. them. I think there could be some. Fine. Got it. So let's just oh, do okay. let's just do one, three, and four as a consent agenda, and then we'll go back to two and five separately. Is that is there any? Sense? Is there any concern in voting in on numbers one, three, and four collectively by any members? One, two, what? One, three, and four. One, three, four. Before on, there's confusion. On the three is the previous settlement. Could be the settlement that you considered on March 6th. Yes. That one issue, has that been cleared? What? I'm sorry, can you explain So, so, so that, that issue, if we're going to discuss that issue, right, we, we should not yes. do that out right. here, in my opinion. Yes, right. can we yeah. discuss that in the closed session then? Kind of then maybe table number three until we so go we'll do, So then now we'll go to items one and looks like one and four 
by uh, by consent agenda. Or you can just vote on the wall individually and, and decide how you want to handle that. That's up to you. In my opinion, based on what I'm hearing, unless there's a specific objection to one and four, let's get those at least knocked out and we can attack two, three, and five separately. Is that okay? Right, but and also number four is in the condition that you yes. Revise yes. The yes. I will okay. revise that. Sure. Sorry. Is there a nomination for number two? Yeah, we'll do separate. Separate. Yeah. Okay. So, can I have a motion to approve number one and number four? I make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objection? Abstention. So those okay. those at least are knocked out. Okay. So, so now you can do in the order that you prefer. Right. Um, if you want to do number two first, we can do number two first. Right. Okay. Now I request nomination for the position to be uh, our architectural architect architects of the school board in Palisade Park. May I have any nominations mm. for the yeah. position of Architectural services. I nominate LAN. LAN. Land associate. Yes. Anybody second? I second. Any other nominations? If not, um, I will call for votes for land associate to be our school district architectural services. <coughs> Work with, please. Sushan. Yes. Rebecca Lee. Here. Yeah. Yunmin. I will. Thank you. Aaron Pack. Here. Suk Young Park. Yes. William Kim. Yes. Ho Young Yu. Aye. Okay. Now I can add the motion number five. five you can now vote on number five. Yes. So you need a motion on publishing right. board member individual email addresses, school board email addresses, of course. Well, who did? Who made the second? Me. Nobody. So someone has to make a motion first. Okay. So. May I have a motion? Oh, okay. I'd like to make a motion to open our board members' public email on our school website. No, I made a motion. <coughs> no, you want to take it? Okay. Roll call, please. Sushan. Yes. Natalie. <coughs> Absent. Yun Men. Absent. Aaron Pack. Young Park. Aye. Charlie Shin. Oh, sorry. William Kim. Same. Oh, Young Yu. Aye. That's four. That's three. That's, there's how many people here? Seven? Here's Seven. Three. Yeah, that passes. Mr. Bush, before we do that, uh, I'm just uh, curious for purposes of putting email addresses, if a board member does not wish to have their email address advertised on the website, is it required? It's required if the board just voted to publish all board member email addresses on the website. Thank you. So can I prefer to go over and then have the audience participation first for the committee vote? <coughs> Yeah, you, you can do whatever order you want. We're gonna so we're gonna skip over number just for the record so board members. Yeah, we're skipping over number number three right now for that, and we're gonna give a discussion. I think we're gonna have a discussion in the executive session, okay? And then we'll go right. back to because we don't want everyone to wait for us to adjourn the special meeting, uh, the special meeting, executive session. So we'll go on the vote on the new business items. I make a motion. Uh, can I have a motion to move? Oh, right. I don't need that. Okay. So there's there are two items on the new business to vote on. One is special meeting on Tuesday, March 7, 2024, 
So called May the hmm? May seven. Yeah, May seventh. Two thousand twenty four to four the two thousand twenty four, two thousand twenty five budget hearing and regular meeting originally scheduled for March um, May fifteenth will be moved to May twenty second as a special meeting. May I have a motion to approve new business uh, but the hearing dates and move our regular session to May 22nd. Sec May 22nd. Second. 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 I have a 22nd. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objection? Abstention. For the record, those meetings will be at 6.30 p.m. They will be advertised as such. The second item on the new business is to um, accept the Board of Education to accept New Jersey Acceleration Program High Impact Tutoring Grants a competitive grants initiative for bigger education agencies to offer high impact tutoring interventions for students in grades three and four. The grant amount is 106,966. May I have a motion to approve this, uh, this item? I'd like to make a motion to approve Raymond's exception. Second. All in favor? Can I just ask one question sure. in regards to the grant? Is it for all the students of three and four, or is yes. it selected so, few? So we submitted the application for all students in grades three and four. Uh, we are in the process, we just received this literally yesterday evening. Uh, we are in the process of identifying, we want to ensure that we're grouping children appropriately, working with our providers, because some of the tutoring uh, is gonna be taking place at home. Part of the grant submission was to ensure that children had Wi-Fi capabilities at home. So it is inclusive of jetpacks in the event that children need it. Um, so we, we, we're we hopeful. This program runs uh, effective as soon as we can start it through December of 2024. Uh, and this really was uh, part of the federal government hoping that we could combat more of the learning loss. Uh, why they selected those two grade levels, I can't answer that. What if the children doesn't have a computer or So we, we are one-to-one. -one. Uh, we will obviously uh, be sure to provide that one-to-one. -one. Okay. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Can I ask a question? Oh, sorry. Is this a before school or after school? So it's an after school program. After school, after school program, Ms. Yes, Smith. Okay, not yes. in the morning. Not in the morning, okay. no. So is this for all students or is it just for them? Only students in grades three and four. All students in the grade. But what if the students are in the other aftercare program? So we can, and again, that's why we're working out the logistics because it's home and the tutoring could be provided virtually uh, by one of our vendors that was part of the application submission. Maybe the course starts at 6 p.m. until 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. We're going to work out what we're going to survey the parents. Uh, we're trying to figure out the, you know, how, how this best works for our families. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or discussions? If not, um, all in favor? Aye. So, I'd like to, um, may I have a motion to move to the audience participation so they don't need to wait for us for our executive session? I'd like to make a motion to have an audience participation. I second. All in favor? Aye. No objection? So we are entering to the audience participation. Each audience can speak three minutes limit and please state your name and address first. Anyone? <laughs> Any audience? Ms. Peppers. Mary Peppers for Feldman Avenue. Um, I would like to make a comment. Uh, if we could get, uh, I don't know, one microphone or something, because 
to see into me. Sometimes it's very hard for us here to hear all of you. Uh, sometimes we write talk, um, and sometimes we don't really get what you guys discuss about. And also, I'm gonna come again for the same reason. Uh, as we know, we have Lindbergh and we have the fan there, and it started getting warm, and it started getting with the same situation that our kid has to jump over the fence. Um, I've been putting this out many times here. I've been seeing many students falling down, trying to cross over, and that fence is being closed. Even for all, as a resident, we could use that track because as we know, we don't have no park, we don't have no place to go here, to walk. That game is being closed, and then when it gets hot, those students trying to just go there to have a little time playing, and it's, it's being locked. So I've been putting this out. They opened it maybe one time last year, and it's fun again. So I would like that to be open, because I don't think it's fair to see the student have to jump over there. It's very dangerous, and as we know, we don't have fun. Um, another thing I would like to ask, I know last meeting we mentioned about the 25,000 that it was for the rent, so the person for the shore, they rent, the, rent that place for Sunday. It was that they didn't want the um, race to be out. Did you guys decide 25,000 again, or how that work? I would like to know that. And also, I know last meeting, it was negotiation. I would like to know if the teacher already get the contract, if this is already over, because you know if it's already over, I would like to know that, because all we know, if we have teacher happy, if we have teacher who work satisfied, we could get better education because this is very important. So I would like to know about that. Thank you. Dr. Cedar, would you like to answer do about want, the... Do we want to ask any other questions uh, so we don't go play ping pong with everyone or... or we are not going to do ping pong. I think this one for one is more easier for us to understand to just stick to the question and the answer. Then we have to start the three minutes Again, <laughs> whatever you want. No, we, we we've done both ways, Jonathan. We've had we've asked all the questions, <coughs> we've made notes, we've closed the audience so we can respond, and then there wasn't back and forth. Sometimes that well, was either way, either way, because I mean, she, you know, she, there was about forty five seconds left on her time. I just I, I I think I think that there's a number of ways you can do this. The most important thing is that you're fair to the public and everybody has an equal opportunity to express themselves within the allotted time. Um, but as the, you know, once the person is completed, in, in my practice, what I like to do is just ask them, are, are you done? Have you said everything you want to say? And then still, you can respond per, per resident, um, but there's still, there still, still should not be, if possible, back and forth. It's better for you as the board to, to have take each one as it comes, but that's the Which way to do it. Which you prefer back and forth like this? Um, back and forth? Well, not back, not back well, and forth. Well, you want me to respond before the next question? Right, that's, that's right, the question. That's, yeah. the question that's right. what you want? Yeah, that's what I want. Because once you collect all the questions first and you probably back all together, sometimes there's a high possibility that you missed out the one question. I know you are very thorough, they but know where to find still. <laughs> Ms. Papravis, yes. thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to answer all four of those questions. I would be more than happy to <coughs> explore the potential of better microphones, maybe one on each table. I think Mr. Guerrero likes those kind of things. He's our techie. That's why he comes to these meetings, to see if there's anything more he can do for us. Number two, the Lindbergh School Fence. This has been an ongoing problem, as you are very well aware. School safety, security is a priority, whether it's during school or after school. Once those gates are open, um, we're gonna be responsible. I've always worked well with the police department. I'm gonna make a phone call first thing in the morning. I'm gonna ask that there be proper supervision and that hours of operation we can't just keep the gates open all the time, obviously, but weekends, I agree with you. No one should be jumping fences. There are no playgrounds. So I'll work with the police, hopefully, that we can have those school playgrounds open for the public. As far as the $25,000, I don't wanna to speak too much uh, to this issue because it is a, a matter that the board already approved, but I can tell you uh, the vendor or, or the client, the lease agreement, is uh, less classrooms than years past, less days than years past. So they made some concessions on their end, um, and the original rental agreement 
prior to last summer when the high school was not utilized. This is not for the Sunday program. This is the summer program at the high school. Um, last summer, because of all of the work at the high school, the program did not run. But two years ago, they paid 20000 So this already is an increase of $5,000. Uh, and it's less classrooms and less days. So I, I think the board did okay. We're not in the business to make money, but there are bills to be paid. Air conditioning uh, is usually on in the summer. Electricity, obviously. Uh, has to get paid and finally with regard to the teacher contracts without saying too much they are meeting there's ongoing negotiations but nothing is settled just yet um, for the park of wisdom charge of opening the gates and closing. so technically during the school days uh during school hours we are mm -hmm. uh that's part but of the we, problem and it's a main, uh, main, main we maintain person? it uh so is it's, it's a person? custodian of each building The issue becomes, when we leave, mm -hmm. we lock the gates for security reasons. Even we, after dismissal? Uh, sometimes oh. after dismissal, sometimes at 10 o'clock at night when our night custodians leave, it depends. Well, uh, she brought the issue because that is not open between four o'clock to nine, right? So yeah, so, so that's a supervision issue. Okay. So I'm concerned, first of all, we have children in aftercare programs on the fields until sometimes 6 p.m. where, you know, in, integrating them with the community sometimes could be a risk. We have to ensure that security is a necessity. I'm sure we can work this out with the town. I hope uh, on behalf of the school, anyone that has a pipeline to anyone that makes a decision, down the block, around the corner, however you call it, helps us in this one because it really just benefits the community. So when it was open all day or weekends, that was without any well, yes and no. Uh, again, it, it fluctuates. I think when they have the manpower, someone is there. Man or woman power, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mr. Sparacic? Yeah, I'd like to uh, put my two cents in on this uh, opening up the fences. I'm sorry? I'm uh, I'd like to put my two cents worth <laughs> into opening the fences at night. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of South Hills Park. I was born here. Uh, I also was some of the people that was on that on that field at times uh, growing up. I honestly don't have. I didn't find Lindbergh School when I was growing up because I went to Catholic school, and I uh, didn't know that even Lindbergh School was there until I was probably 16. Um, that's yeah, it's a weird thing. We had problems. When I was 18 years old, we had two people stabbed in that field. I request, just for safety, we have a special officer, police officer, that is going to be, when that gate is open, there. I don't care about the kids going in there. I care about one kid getting hurt. That's all I care about. That's why I make sure when we leave at 4 o'clock, those, when we leave, the, when I leave, those gates are locked. Those gates are only opened and closed as the custodians go in and out. They're not left open unless there's something going on on the field. Let's err in a way of safety. Like I said, have an officer just stationed there. I don't care, sitting in a car, whatever you have to do. Put them in, put them in the uh, cafeteria. Or, you know, but we need someone there because uh, I do not want to see any bloodshed. Like I said. I lost a friend that was stabbed on Broad Avenue on a, on a small fight when I was 17. I, things happen in this town. You know, it's, uh, it's a, a two second misjudgment that a person makes. Have something there to secure the place. Open it up to the town. I, I'll, we'll pick up the garbage in the morning. We'll take care of, you know, we'll clean it up so the kids, whatever has to happen. But please have security there. Thank you for your comments. Manny Rivera, Rivera. Yeah. Uh, Rivera Glen Avenue. Um, I know Dr. Zerlo had stated that the negotiations for the teachers are still ongoing, but I know that there have been like missed meetings and canceled meetings and whatnot. I want to know if you guys are imposing some sort of deadline upon yourselves to finally put this to bed. As Mary said, healthy teachers is 
for better freedom. With that, we just uh, had uh, our first proposal exchange meeting on what last night. It took a three, four, three more than three hours. So it's ongoing. We're we, we're just move on. We're keep moving on the further meeting dates, which are. Uh, we have to agree upon all the dates, and we are actually um, speaking and discussion about our next meeting as well. Yeah, sure. So if I could just respond as the attorney. So I, I think that um, the board is very focused on bargaining in good faith. I, I know that because I just took over as board attorney and we've been talking <coughs> um, with lawyers in my office and members of this board. Um, when you say deadline, um, you know, that's sort of a loosely defined thing. I know the board is committed to working closely with the union to do whatever it can to work this out. I think that's the best that we could possibly offer in this discussion, but it's very important that the board, um, the board knows is very important, and I know that the board is actively working on it. So I think it's in, that that's probably the best that, that we can offer you, and, and I think that, that, that you should know that. Hi, my name is Karen Cerny. I'm actually one of the chairs for negotiation. Um, we actually filed an unfair labor practice because the fact is it's not in good faith. They canceled many meetings. On our first um, meeting, we signed paperwork saying we wouldn't leave the meeting without another scheduled date. We had our second meeting yesterday. We left without that scheduled date. We were told that it will come. So. Good faith thing is there. Yeah, again, I, I'll just reiterate on behalf of the board. You know, we just got here and we're working with the board. I, I can tell you that from behind the curtain, I can only tell you so much, but I'll tell you the board is absolutely doing its best to bargain in good faith. I know the position is otherwise. That was filed before, um, you know, yesterday. Um, the, the UPC was filed last week or the week before, I believe, and, and we're gonna we're gonna be able to show that we're we're working in good faith, and the board's gonna continue to do that. Any other partic audience participation? If not, may I have a motion to adjourn the, the public participation? Any second? Second. All in favor? Aye. No objection, no abstention. So, Secretary read the reason for going into the second session, like HIV, like a student? Uh, usually we just publicize it and then I'll usually let the board or public know if there can be formal action after. Um, so all you, all you just, but it's important that before we go into executive, se executive session that we explain that we're doing it, I think, and I want to make sure that we to receive uh, to, to, uh, for our student matter, student matters, um, uh, negotiations, and to, re to receive attorney client advice regarding negotiations. So we've got two there, two exceptions there. And is there any other reason that we're going to executive session? I believe to discuss the legal matter. That's the that's the one I just referred oh, to. I thought that was the student settlement right. you're talking about? No. Yeah. I'm talking about a different one. Different. Um, okay. So just say that the board, the, the board um, you're, you need a motion to go into executive session to discuss, um, uh, to receive attorney client advice, to discuss negotiations, and to discuss student matters. And we'll cover it on all three fronts. As for Mr. Bush's motion, I mean, so, uh, someone's uh, got a resolution. Yeah. Someone needs to make a motion. motion. Yes. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Formal Aye. action Aye. may be taken upon returning at 11 p.m. No. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not.